everybody and welcome to another Transformers Masterpiece review. Yes, that's right. I'm actually reviewing something that's official, <laughs> not a bootleg or a third party. Uh, in today's video, I'm taking a look at the Takara Tomy MPM4. This is part of their Masterpiece movie series. And I'd like to thank the guys at TFS Express for making this review possible. Now, much like we got with the Bumblebee, not a huge fan of the box it feels very cheap uh, it's just not on par with our traditional masterpiece boxes but i imagine that's because of these guys because they've had some sort of input uh, just spinning it around we've got prime on the side in his robot and vehicle mode and we've got prime on the back uh, the shots aren't really that impressive and uh, normally with masterpiece figures you get some really nice shots on the back uh, these kind of feel a little bit amateurish but we do have interchangeable mask here we get the articulated articulated hands and we do get the removable matrix of leadership now this is based on his first appearance back in 2007 but his form didn't actually change for the revenge of the fallen uh, hence they've got the matrix of leadership as well prime had that exact same look uh, so without further ado let's crack him open prime comes packaged in his robot mode with his gun two blades and a set of instructions now the instructions aren't bad again they're made of a very cheap kind of paper but they are uh, quite straightforward and easy to follow and you've got some nice red sections here outlining which bits need to move i mean i absolutely hated the revenge of the fallen mold not because it didn't look great because it did the engineering was insane and he looked fantastic but because it was an absolute nightmare to transform uh, it was aimed at children and i can only imagine how many parents sat there on christmas day having to transform it for their children and getting just as frustrated as I do. Now I know there's some people out there that say it's not that difficult and it's really easy. I just don't have the knack for it. It just doesn't seem to work for me. I think the mold actually hates me. Right and here we have him out of his plastic prison. Uh, straight off the bat he is a very good looking prime. I love how slender he looks in comparison. When I first saw the shots of this I thought oh great they're going to release another repaint of the Revenge of the Fallen mold and then as you look closer, you realize it's a completely new mold and he looks so much better. Now it's not absolutely perfect. It's not exactly spot on to the CGI model. Uh, these sections here are more curved, etc. Uh, but they've made it work. I mean, comparing this to something like the 3A version, for example, is completely unfair because the 3A is amazing as it looks, it doesn't transform. And this, they've managed to capture a high level of detail and complexity whilst giving it the ability to transform. Uh, it really is a masterpiece version. He comes with his gun. Um, personally, I'm not a fan of the gun. Uh, they've kind of painted it and then thought, oh, I can't be bothered. And that's how it feels to me. He's got a nice paint scheme on him, and then you get the gun here. You've got this nice smoked section around the tip, but that's it. That's literally all they've done. I would have liked some dry brushing or at least something. This is the most expensive version of this mold that I've purchased. And you expect a little bit more. I mean, if you get the later versions of the Revenge of the Fallen line, you get some really nice paint applications, uh, you get some chrome, and I don't know, this, this feels very mech tech again to me. It's a nice gun, but it's just not quite right. And then we get his blades, you've got some Cybertronian writing on there. Pretty much what we would expect. I know that there's already, I think it's BB-7, uh, giving us an upgrade kit for him with painted up smoked weapons and fully articulated kind of UFO style hands. I think there's even uh, a new head 
uh, not entirely sure, but I know there is definitely an upgrade kit in the process for this guy, which is always good to know, but really, should it take a third party or a bootleg company giving us these accessories to make a perfect prime? Shouldn't these be things that are included with the original? Now the blades fit nicely into the back of the hands, like so, but I don't like how that now leaves the hand in kind of that gorilla mode. I, is that CG accurate? I'm not entirely sure. I mean, they look nice, just kind of dropping down out of that section of his arm, uh, but it's, it's something just off about the way the hands now sit. The gun has the standard masterpiece style peg. I do like how the fingers sit on the gun there as well. They're all different lengths and it gives a very natural, very realistic look to how he holds the gun. I'm not trying to hate on this figure. I do honestly like it. Uh, I just feel that it's just slightly shortcoming, that's all. Uh, is by far the best movie prime that I have. Uh, uh, it's just these little tiny things that I would have liked just to make it kind of from an 8 to a 10. If you look at the back of Prime, there's a tab just inside here where his trailer hitch is. You can actually bring his gun in and that will slide into the back of that trailer hitch. And you can attach the swords either side. I don't like that because they've done an amazing job at getting rid of that really large backpack kibble that Prime's always seem to have had. And this just kind of adds to it. It's not like we got with the Age of Extinction or the last night where you've got that sword kind of going up across the back. It just looks like a big gun stuffed on his back. Uh, there's nothing natural about it, which is a shame. I would have liked kind of like that big sword that he gets in Age of Extinction. I would have liked that sort of option for it. But of course we are dealing with different weapons here and who knows, maybe we'll get uh, another version of this by Takara on their own and they'll give us a trailer where everything can be stored. Right, enough critiquing. Let's just gush over how good he actually looks. I mean, that is a very nice head sculpt. You've got the kind of blue in his eyes just popping through there. Really clean fantastic range of motion there as well. So glad that there's none of those sound of, oh, I'm Optimus Prime. You know, I, I, I dislike that gimmick. I know it's aimed towards the children and this is more aimed at the adult collector, but I just think you sacrifice so much when you start adding gimmicks. Really nice pinstriping on the top of the flames there. You've got these big chromed up brow sections at uh, the top of the cab. Not a fan of these sections per se. I know these are going to be hidden when you join the front of the truck together, uh, but they look a little bit bland in comparison. We do have lots and lots of gorgeous die-cast metal in here as well. Personally prefer the Dark of the Moon version which had the abs. But this is definitely nice nonetheless. Let's take a closer look at those hands. Uh, they say articulated. In comparison to the other movie hands, yes they are. But when you get something like the UFO hands which are fully articulated, that's sort of what I expected, I guess. But these are definitely a huge step up from what we're used to with the primes. Uh, we do have rotation in there and of course we do have that tilt inwards and outwards, so it is good, it's just not quite there. Again, the pinstriping is continued. That backpack, that is a fantastic display of engineering there, that they've got everything folded so cleanly. I mean, that is a flat pack, you know, that's, exceptionally done. I would like rubber tires, but uh, these aren't too bad. Good locations for those, they can stay out. Got the ability to move them up, like so. I believe that's the correct placement for them. 
up like so, isn't it? Again, coming down to the legs. Serial number. <laughs> Serial number. And just look at that. I mean, there's some play against this section if we get the full tilt on, but just so much better than what we're used to. And then we've got the grill on the bottom here. Uh, I've known a few people complain that their grill is getting scratched up because uh, it literally sits directly on the ground when you stand him up. Uh, I'm not going to have him in his vehicle mode. I will have him displayed in his robot mode, but this could definitely cause an issue with some people. I would highly recommend you get some rubber pads or something and put them on the bottom if you value how your truck mode looks because I can see this getting scratched up because it's a very thin almost powdery paint on there and that's going to get torn to shreds I mean don't get me wrong I mean if you're going for the battle damaged <laughs> look for him then yeah I mean that could definitely work now to answer a few people's questions the UFO shield and shotgun and they do fit in his hands but there's nothing really to hold them there they just don't fit in perfectly they slide into those hands but there's nothing to grip and keep them secure i mean the shield it's especially it is a floppy mess the gun's not too bad because his hands grip quite nicely around the handle but the shield well that's all over the place and unfortunately it's the same story with the official shield as well it's a bit of a floppy mess but that being said that does actually look pretty nice uh, obviously the colors are different they don't match up but uh, it's still a fairly nice look for him. He does look good with that shield. And finally, my personal favourite. Here he is, along with the sword, which comes with the Kubum Bao oversized version of Prime. Uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's too big, but man, yeah, he'd definitely be able to look after himself, wouldn't he? Speaking of the Kubum Bao Prime, here he is alongside the MP10 as well, to give you an idea of how the MPM series scales. And here he is alongside the Dark of the Moon mold and the MPM Bumblebee. See, I definitely like this kind of paint scheme more with those abs and the darker grey. But that being said, uh, articulation-wise, posability, uh, he's got nothing on the Masterpiece series. And for those of you that are curious, uh, unfortunately it doesn't really work. It's kind of being held on there by a little energy on and a lot of luck. But that being said, fans want it. If you are watching this video, this works. This looks really good. You just need to tweak this section at the back here, tweak the guns so they can be held properly. And I need to find the uh, tips for the guns and the other gun. But you get the idea. This could look really good on display. And here we have him alongside Movie Megs with uh, the slight upgrades. Uh, am I the only one that's hoping they do a masterpiece movie Megs? Whether they do uh, this version or the Dark of the Moon Megs, uh, we definitely need a half decent one of this. I know that we get the likes of Forever Toys doing their version of Megatron, but I can't afford to spend 280 odd bucks on a figure this size that doesn't transform. I, d I just can't do it. Uh, I just hope that Hasbro or Takara, they will deliver us a Megatron. I mean, it makes sense. They've given us the Prime. It makes sense to give us a Megatron uh, with a very similar sculpt. Just tweak it and give us these kind of more accurate bootleg arms. Right now, before we cover the articulation, let's just take a look at this alternative head sculpt. Just flip the front panel up, rotate the head around, and then just bring this section back down and there we have the prime without the mask i can't say i'm a fan of prime's face uh prime i dislike your face <laughs> there we go i do prefer the masked version it, it just ticks a lot of the boxes for me oh, the head sculpt is incredible on this articulation right head can look up <laughs> and we can look down which is really good we have uh, some left and right motion there. Uh, it's actually on two different joints. There's a swivel here, and there's the up and down motion here, which does allow for some very nice motion. Unfortunately, we can't get any quizzical tilting. The shoulders, a nice soft ratchet going around. 
up to the side on a friction joint. They do tend to come away here. I don't know if this is meant to tuck in and tab in there somewhere. I would have liked a butterfly joint on there as well, but beggars can't be choosers. We do get an upper bicep rotation. We get a nice, nice, nice bend at the elbow, but it's hindered by this section here, unfortunately. Again, it's just a friction joint. I've already mentioned the hands, but there is rotation on the wrist. The fingers are pinned and are in this fixed position. There is an additional point of articulation on the pointing finger of Prime, so he can tell people off. It's like... Uh, the thumb has its own hinge there, and the hands themselves can tilt inwards and outwards. Coming down to the waist, there is some waist rotation, albeit very slight. And we do get a little bit of forwards and backwards motion on the abs, but it's a pretty big lump in there and nothing really wants to give at all, which is a bit of a shame. Can't really see a way of avoiding that um, other than untabbing all of these back sections. Thighs, outwards, backwards, to the side, with a light uh, ratchet joint on that side because that's just far too loose. We've got double jointed knees and they're not ugly double joints. We've got some nice details on the back of the knee pads there and this isn't completely untowards. It does look very mechanical and looks like the sort of thing you'd expect from a robot. Coming down to the ankles, they go backwards and forwards. We've got some really nice tilting but at the same time, we don't really have any left and right motion left relying on the thigh swivel there to rotate the feet left and right. But all things considered, he's a pretty well-balanced figure and the use of die cast does indeed help this guy. Uh, I think taking this and the bumblebee, uh, this guy really is leaps and bounds better than their bumblebee. He just felt kind of unfinished, I had people telling me that mine must have been a bootleg or a KO, it wasn't, it was an official piece and it just had faults. And this guy does appear to be more sound, very well engineered and extremely well balanced figure. For those of you that are interested in the matrix of leadership, these sections here just untab and you can gain access to it by bringing this section here down. It's pretty much what we'd expect from a matrix. It's access is quite closed. It's quite difficult to get inside there. Um, I mean, I don't really know what we're expecting. It's a movie matrix. It's die cast, I think. <laughs> it's not a lot of weight to it, but it is die cast and it does just tab in to these squares here and we can just push this back in and roll that back up and then we can bring the chest back up and then these can just be brought back in and tab in on either side right now to get prime transformed up into his vehicle mode start off by coming around to the back section here you want to untab this piece and you want to rotate it outwards this whole section here is gonna rotate around and we're gonna get this here nice and square and then bring it down like this. That's got all of these out of the way, exposing all of that back section. Grab these windows and pull them outwards. These shoulder pieces are going to come down. Bring the front of the hood outwards and then fully extend it. I love how all of this was tucked away inside here. The shoulder joint will now drop downwards and then we can just tuck this piece upwards, move the smokestacks out of the way. They just tabbed into the side here and then lift the whole of the bonnet section upwards. Slide these across and tab them both in together. And if you look here, there's a tab here and a tab here. You're gonna bend the roof panel section back and that's just going to push and tab in behind the head. Bring the chest panel section down. And at the same time, we're gonna move 
primes, legs, upwards. Uh, this is very reminiscent of the revenge of the fallen mold, isn't it? Grabbing hold of prime's crotch, grab hold of this upper section and just pull away. And this whole piece here is going to lift away from the center section. We can now move this matrix chamber downwards. Bring the panels on the arm upwards. Rotate this piece around and push that back down. Make sure the gas tank section is brought up and over between the two parts of the arms and then bring these shoulders into the center and they will square up nicely and all tab together. So at the moment you'll be left with something that looks a little bit like this. Uh, yeah, bring this hinge up and over. As you can see, Prime's head is just going to disappear into that nice little cavity there. Make sure that the top of the window sections are brought down and we need to rotate these window panels all the way back inside, bring those over and there's a tab here and a slot just here that's going to push and that's going to tab into place. Do that on both sides. Bring these two pieces together and they should, he says, line up quite nicely and just tab in underneath the windscreen section there and everything's just going to tab in to place there we go. as if by magic it's actually holding together better than what i thought it was going to <laughs> bring the exhausts upwards and then rotate this section outwards completely unfold these back panel pieces and then we can bring this piece down lift up the top of the exhaust system and this is going to slide inside here and everything is just going to tuck in nice and tidily bring this section backwards and you want to rotate this back piece here until it lines up with these tab slots just in the upper thigh just push those up and make sure that it's tabbed in let's come around to my arch nemesis of the revenge of the fallen mold uh, the legs <laughs> uh, bring this side panel here down uh, the wheel actually needs to rotate you need to bring it up and there's a little notch on the back of here that's going to slide into the groove on here come to the underside and you want to just give this piece a pull and lift that upwards from here we want to lift the front of the grill up. We can then extend this foot section, bring these pieces in to the center, very much like what we got with the original Revenge of the Fallen toy. And again, come around to the leg pieces and giving it a small tug, bring this all the way forwards, straighten up that joint. And there's a small tab here that's going to tab in to the side here and locate nicely into place bring these pieces back upwards now that we've got the legs fully extended we do have several tabbing points there's one and the knees make sure you bring that in nice and tight there's several on the front here as well just tab all of those together now bring the cab section back over and as you can see there are various tabbing points just make sure that the lights are facing outwards and bring these down sliding everything tidily into place and just start tabbing we can now bring the gas tank sections in they're just going to tab in on the side and we brought together with the roof canopy section like so rotate the storage units and that's going to tab in to the side skirt section although you really could do something being behind there to help you lock that into place and then coming over to the wheel guards they are going to tab in to the top of this piece just above the wheels and it's just a matter of making sure everything is perfectly straight because it seems to be it just feels a little off at the moment it feels a little bent out of position 
So let's just make sure everything's tabbed in. Last but not least, just fold up this back piece here. And there we have Prime in all of his glory. Now he is not without his faults. Uh, unfortunately, there's quite a few. I love how they've got everything transformed and the truck, in my opinion, is very passable. It's nowhere near as nice as the original version, but it's definitely a passable prime. Not a fan of the paint scheme here. They've kind of started it and then it just kind of fizzles out. Uh, my issues lie in, in things tabbing together. I've got these sections here that tab into the side of the legs. There's nothing behind them to cause any resistance when you're tabbing them in. Uh, these two pieces here no longer tab together and it just feels like there should be something tabbed in there. Uh, trouble lies when you try and push against something to tab it in and there's just no resistance, there's just flex in the plastic because there's nothing behind it. Like these doors, for example, you push those in, but there's nothing behind it to cause any resistance. So you end up with a door that doesn't really want to stay put. The same with the windows, you can push those in, but you don't really have anything behind it to cause any resistance. That's what I liked about the Revenge of the Fallen Mold. When you pushed something in, there was already like a panel or a piece of plastic or something behind it, not just an open void. So everything tabbed in. When you got it tabbed in, it looked incredible. And I think that's what's missing from this. I think they're just shy of getting this to perfection. Uh, it's just missing those tiny little touches uh, which allow things to tab in as they should. Here he is alongside his counterparts. Uh, I personally prefer all of the chrome and the blue that they've used on this version. Uh, but like I said, this is basically based on his 2007 screen appearance. Uh, I, maybe the blue is right, I, I don't know, but it's I, I'm just not a fan of this big silver section here behind the screen. I prefer the kind of cogs and workings of the original. Uh, that being said, I mean, it's a good compromise. Uh, I don't like that everything's missing along here. You've got the fuel tanks there and it just looks like we could have something else going on here. When we get the original, you've got all of these cogs and mechanisms and it does sit lower and it just looks it looks more accurate in my opinion and this does kind of now look like the size of a large voyager when you transform him up uh, it's my personal opinion uh, i'm going to keep him in robot mode anyway that goes without saying uh, but i think that the vehicle mode has been highly compromised to get that bot mode as good as it is now, you may or may not be aware, they have the trailer hitch section here uh, with the fifth wheel. This is completely compatible with the MP10's trailer, which for a lot of fans is good. You know, they wanted that, they wanted it to square up. Me personally, I don't like this. I would have preferred the fifth wheel section that we got with the Revenge of the Fallen because I have the UFO trailer, which in my opinion is more screen accurate, but it doesn't now connect properly because we don't have that circular hole in the fifth wheel uh, to drop the pin down. But that being said, I mean, it probably is too large for this Prime anyway. Uh, it does look slightly odd. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the MPM4 Optimus Prime. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I do love the robot mode. Yes, I was nitpicking, but it's still a very awesome robot mode nonetheless. I just feel that the vehicle mode does suffer highly because of that bot mode. The vehicle mode is very reminiscent of the Dark of the Moon Voyager version. It's kind of got that feel to it. It's a close but no cigar. We can mount the weapons on the back. They can go either way, but they do look ridiculous, unfortunately. Uh, but like I said, 
This is a sacrifice they've had to make to get that bot mode as accurate as it could be. Is this an essential piece for a masterpiece collector? I'm not entirely sure. If you're a movie fan, then yes, this is, in my opinion, the best version of the movie Optimus Prime. Uh, but if you just collect Masterpiece and you want something that's going to scale, is it in keeping? No, not really. The movie verse and the cartoon verse are very different in their appearances. Thanks again to the guys at TFS Express for making this review possible. I've included a link in the description below where you can buy the product. And I've also included a link up here to the Bumblebee video. Until next time from myself and MPM4 Optimus Prime. Oh, Goodbye.